Welcome back to Montreal Today. Quite a story to tell you now. Uh, the man you're about to meet was diagnosed with a brain tumor back in 1995, uh, and at that point, he literally thought that his life was over. Uh, he turned to the doctors. Uh, they treated him as best they could, but thought, in fact, that it would come back. Then he said, I'm not, it did come back, and he said, I'm not necessarily ready to go through the same sort of treatment. He looked for alternatives, and he turned to a homeopath, and he was cured. In fact, a brain scan just a few months after the treatment showed that the tumor was gone. We're going to talk about this, uh, qu quite a controversial subject in some circles, but also very informative. To talk about this, I want you to meet the man in question, Mr. Paul Poirier. Good morning. Thanks yes, for coming sir. on this morning. And you're still 100% healthy. The brain tumor's gone, right? Yeah, 110 so far. And it's thanks to the lady next to you on mm -hmm. the couch, Marie-Josée Beaubien. Okay. She is from the Homeopathic Health Center in Ottawa. Good morning to you. Thank Good you morning. for coming on this morning. Also joining us uh, via satellite this morning from Victoria, B.C. is Dr. Stephen Malthouse. He is a general practitioner with uh, an interest in homeopathic medicine. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Uh, w from what you just heard is the terms of the story that uh, the doctor said, you know, we, we would go through another treatment. He turned to homeopathic remedies and the brain tumor was gone from the brain scan. Does it surprise you? You, you, can, you have both sides of the fence here. Yes, no, it, it's, it's not a surprise that that sort of thing can happen with homeopathy. In fact, I have a colleague in Australia who's been treated for a brain tumor successfully with homeopathic medicine. How do your colleagues feel about this when you know that, that you're a proponent of both? Um, I think there's a pretty mixed feeling among physicians about uh, homeopathy. Uh, many of them can't understand the basic principles of homeopathy and that kind of puts them off stride. Also, it means changing one's whole view of uh, disease and how to properly treat it. Yeah, let me ask Paul, when, your when you first said to your doctor, I'm going to a homeopath, what did he or she say to you? Uh, actually, I never really told them I was going to go to a homeopath. Were you afraid to tell them? <laughs> no, I just, uh, I just felt that I wanted to try something less aggressive first, as opposed to the possibility of chemo or radio. I figured something like homeopathy would possibly be more natural and less likely to have long-term side effects. I would imagine it was a case of you were just desperate. You just wanted to get rid of this. You were willing to try anything. Well, of course, as well. I didn't want to have this linger on as I wanted to nip it in the bud. Yeah, yeah. and then you, you turned to Marie Jose, and, and you, did you say I have a, an instant cure? Did you know that no, it would be it successful? Go, it doesn't go this way with homeopathy. You have to take the case seriously. And uh, you have to study many years to be a homeopath. Yes. We'll talk about the scientific <coughs> involvement so, in a second. So uh, I had to ask him a few questions. In fact, I was quite lucky with uh, Monsieur Boirier because uh, just the way he is built was helping me a lot to find out about the remedy, mm. at least one remedy. What did you give him? I gave him a mix of uh, remedies. The first was a mix of remedies in the tuberculinic family, what we call the tuberculinic family in homeopathy. Uh -huh. Then the second was quite easy. This was sulfur. Now, you say the t <coughs> tuberculosis family. Yeah, but it, it, this is not tuberculosis itself. It's okay. a mix. Okay, that I gave him. Now, where did you get this information <coughs> in terms of studying? Is this something for everyone or his particular no, case no, based no. on his body? No, no, no. It's uh, uh, it's it's specifically for him. Okay. Is that uh, the key in home homeopathy? That it's yeah. You have to turn the... specifically to the person. I had a case like that, a brain tumor in Kingston, and I gave her a little mix of uh, tuberculosis. Uh, family but this is not tuberculosis okay at all and in that case i give sepia so a complete different remedy dr madhouse what do you think of, about all of this uh, and what do you think of your colleagues who are perhaps opposed to the homeopathic uh, focus here well you know treating brain tumors and treating cancer in general is very difficult and whether you're a homeopath or a conventional doctor i I think um, conventional doctors treat cancers sometimes based on the statistics of success uh, using chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. We um, think there's, you know, there's some place for those therapies. However, homeopathy adds an extra edge or in some cases where the conventional treatment is really not going to do much for the patient, uh, homeopathy may be the first choice. But I think what uh, the doctor said there is that uh, homeopathic medicines are individualized. Mm -hmm. uh, people cannot treat themselves by going to the local store and just picking up uh, a remedy that they read about. It's very difficult to do that. Homeopathy excels in treating um, a lot of diseases that are chronic and really can't be touched by conventional treatments and does a good job of it. Um, however, with regard to cancer, it, it really needs a professional to, th to help you thread the, between the therapies and taking the best of both, both conventional and uh, alternative or complementary therapies like homeopathy. Um, 
my colleagues, well... Yeah. You went through I, a traditional medical school. I mean, you, you, I you did. up until your own interest in this, had the same philosophy, I would imagine, as you were taught in the schools. You know, what is your, your message to them, and, and are, are, is it getting through? Is this the way of the future? It's slowly getting through. Yeah. Whether it'll be the way of the future, I'm not sure, because it takes a lot of effort to individualize the treatment. In other words, choosing sepia for one patient and uh, homeopathic sulfur for another. Um, that's a little bit difficult, you know, for a regular doctor who's used to prescribing the same medicine for the same diagnostic label. Now, is this because they're feeling threatened by this, or is it because they just don't believe in the, I, I said in the way of the future, but in fact, the, in fact the way of the past. I mean, this was traditional before conventional medicine. Mm -hmm. It's been around 200 years. Yeah. Um, do they well, feel threatened by it? Mm, I think some do, yes, definitely. And uh, it means going back to study for many years to become a, a really capable homeopath. It's not something you do overnight or on the weekend. As an MD, what is your advice to the population in general when it concerns uh, a serious illness? When you are diagnosed, is this something we should implement in our life every day? I think homeopathy is a great form of medicine for acute illnesses and chronic illnesses. Uh, a brain tumor is something in a category all itself, uh, similar with cancer. Uh -huh. um, the best is to use uh, complementary medicine, which means uh, orthodox medicine and alternative medicine. Try to find the best of both. But certainly homeopathy is an excellent type of medicine and is really worthwhile investigating. So this is in addition to as opposed to opposed to? Yeah, take the best of both worlds. That's the way to go. And that sounds like general advice that I would imagine most MDs would say, but I, we're not hearing that from most MDs. You would think they'd want the best for their patient. Yeah, many MDs are not uh, willing to listen uh, to either patients or their colleagues regarding some of these uh, complementary therapies like homeopathy. Well, you know, they're very busy and, uh, you know, they've got a lot of demands on them and uh, they've got a lot of their time has been invested in becoming experts in the conventional field, I think some of them, there's, there's not room. They can't let in a new idea like homeopathy. More and more doctors uh, with MDs are, are coming over to your way of thinking. Thank you so much for joining us from Victoria this morning. I know you're, oh, you're, you're very busy welcome. there. All right, thank you, Dr. Malhouse. Dr. Stephen Malhouse joined us from Victoria, BC. I just want to talk about the scientific aspect, if we can, uh, Marie-José, Marie because I know that that's a real concern for you. Not all so-called homeopaths are created equal. You've got to do your homework as a consumer. Yes, uh, I think that right now we have good schools in homeopathy uh, and they are doing their best. But however, the students that are coming in are not all at the same level. So as a consumer, what do I look for in terms of qualifications? Well, uh, uh, take a look at the schools that uh, were behind those homeopaths and take a look at their background, okay? I really appreciate it through my studies that I had the background in microbiology. Mm. Uh, and chemistry because I learned a lot from it so this is what I would like uh, the person uh, to go for. Is Paul now considered cured? Uh, I cannot say something like that officially okay okay but I can tell that he is healthy. Is it is it possible and I, maybe I'm putting you on the spot here is it possible the brain tumor could come back? If in the way that I was taught okay uh -huh. if it's coming back it's because he will have a trauma Okay, uh -huh. if he doesn't have any trauma, or if he has a trauma and I can take a look at it, I think that he'll be fine. Really? I really think that he will be this fine. This was a one-time treatment? The, I, I gave him two things. Uh, one thing, he didn't have the choice. He, he took it at my office, okay? Uh -huh. But the second, he brought it at home, and he took it at home. We should say what you just saw in there was the brain scan showing that the tumor was gone. When was that taken? That one was the uh, August 98. And what does the doctor who, who operated on you say about all of this? Um, well, he's quite a bit further away. I've dealt with several doctors, but... Uh, I'd Out of say frustration, he's further away? No, no, just oh, because okay. he, geographically, he's a little, quite a bit further. Okay. But, uh, no, he did the surgery. I haven't really talked to him since. I've dealt with other doctors in Ottawa since then. And uh, I haven't really brought up the homeopathic aspect to them, you know. And I've dealt with a couple of doctors in Montreal so far. And... Uh, Nobody seems to really want to get into the homeopathic uh, aspect of it. So what, I, what I've done, I like I recruited $4,000 plus for uh, brain tumor research for the Montreal Neuro mm. just last night. So I'm trying to, I want to make sure that everybody understands that I'm doing my best to get research out there towards brain tumor. And your, congr your uh, words to Matthew Jose, who sits right next to you, are what? Thank you very much. You've helped me a lot so far. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be here in 20 years to keep thanking you. <laughs>
Thank you both for coming on Thank this morning. You. I appreciate it. We okay. have a phone number because I know a lot of viewers will be interested in this. We want to give you that phone number now. If you'd like to reach Marie-José Beaubien, who actually came in from Ottawa, there's the phone number, area code 613-247-9525, 613-247-9525. It's the Homeopathic Health Center located in Ottawa. Thank you all for coming on this morning and Thank shedding you. the uh, information on all of this. We'll take a break. More of Montreal today right after this. This is incredible.